In 1977, during a vacation in Bali with her family, Jane Gillespie fell in love with the prince of the small kingdom of Bali, and their love story was like a fairy tale. Despite their significant differences in origin and cultural background, they got married. Since then, she lived with him in the palace, surrounded by many servants. However, life in the palace turned out to be far from a fairy tale. What has Jane's life been like after marrying the prince? What has happened to them 45 years later? And what do their children look like now? Watch the full video to find out. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified as I upload a new video. Let's go on! There have been several historical examples of an ordinary girl becoming the wife of royalty. An American girl, Hope Cook, married the king of the small Asian state of Sikkim in 1963. Masako married Emperor Naruhito in 1993. Student Lisa Halaby married King Hussein of Jordan and became Queen Noor in 1978, among many other examples. These women have achieved their big dreams and found themselves in a fairy tale. The same thing happened to an ordinary Australian girl, Jane Gillespie. Today, almost no one knows about the incident. But once upon a time, many Western newspapers wrote about the wedding of a simple Australian girl and an Asian prince. It was as if Jane had stepped into an exotic fairy tale, settling into a palace in an earthly paradise. However, for Jane, things weren't as magical as they seemed. But how did she meet the prince? Jane was born in 1953 in Sydney, Australia. Her father is Colonel Rollo Gillespie, who served as a private secretary to the governor of New South Wales until 1974. After earning her degree in child psychology, she began working as a kindergarten teacher. Due to her passion for travel and exploring new cultures, in June 1977, Jane and her family departed from Sydney for a two-week vacation in Bali, Indonesia. Upon their arrival, they stayed at a hotel located on Royal Palace land, owned by Prince Raka's brother-in-law. Prince Raka, a handsome young man who enjoyed meeting international guests and discussing Balinese life and culture, crossed paths with Jane during their stay. The two quickly fell in love and spent nearly every day together, discovering they had much in common. However, as all vacations must come to an end, Jane and her family returned to Sydney. Jane resumed her role as a kindergarten teacher, but she was haunted by constant memories of the serene and leisurely Balinese way of life, especially her time with Prince Raka. Though Jane was educated at two of Sydney's most exclusive schools, city life never really appealed to her. However, she stayed in touch with Raka by writing letters. It's funny to think about now, but in the 1970s, there wasn't a telephone in Bali, not even in the palace. She always looked forward to receiving an envelope from Bali. As the months passed, she couldn't stop thinking about how happy she had been in Bali. So she made the bold decision to resign from her job and return for a sabbatical. When she arrived, Prince Raka immediately asked her to marry him, and she didn't hesitate to say yes. Jane said, From the moment I saw him, it was as if we'd never been apart. I realized that what we had was more than a fleeting holiday romance. However, there was strong opposition to this marriage because Prince Raka was expected to marry within the royal family circle. Despite the family's insistence that he marry someone from among their ranks, Prince Raka stood firm and insisted on marrying only Jane. The family even took her passport and checked her with Interpol to ensure she was legitimate. Luckily, Jane's background checks came back clean and in May 1978, the two had a beautiful wedding. The wedding ceremony involved four costume changes and was attended by many people from local villages. Jane's parents flew to Bali for the special occasion. The couple was incredibly happy to finally be married. After the wedding, Jane took the name Princess Jero Azri Kirthiasa. Jero means from the palace and Azri means perfect. Additionally, Jane embraced the Hindu faith. Bali is now a republic state, but the royal family is seen as custodian of the Hindu faith and is widely respected. However, 
Previously, the kingdomship of Bali was a series of Hindu Buddhist kingdoms that once ruled some parts of the volcanic island of Bali. Perhaps it was the romantic atmosphere of this unique place that captivated the girl. However, after the wedding, Jane experienced a significant change in every aspect of her day-to-day -day life. The couple lived in Aubud, a tiny village, and there were very few Westerners. Though she and her husband resided in a palace, it was far from palatial. It was 1978, so even the palace lacked amenities such as electricity or proper facilities. The residence was beautiful, but everyday life was very primitive. Kerosene lamps lit the palace, and there was no running water. Additionally, there were no telephones, thus no communication with the outside world. Jane also wasn't allowed to leave the premises without permission, so at times she did feel a bit stuck. Furthermore, Prince Raka was allowed to have multiple wives, as his father had ten wives, and he was the youngest son of his tenth wife. However, Jane told him that she couldn't see this happening. After one year, they welcomed their first son, Max, and before their second son, Vegas, was born, they moved to Sydney. The couple wanted their children to experience both Balinese and Australian cultures and be educated in Sydney. While in Sydney, they were blessed with a daughter named Maya. Despite few visits to Bali, the children preferred the vibe there over Sydney. The couple sacrificed the royal lifestyle to raise and educate their three children in Australia. Prince Raka was forced to undertake jobs as a gardener and a waiter to pay the bills, and he always longed to return to Bali. After nearly 12 years in Sydney, the family returned to Bali. In 2011, Princess Azri's son, Max, had a grand wedding with Indonesia's popular TV personality, Happy Salma. Similar to his mother, Max met his wife while she was on vacation in Bali. The wedding ceremony took place at the Royal Palace of Obud, where more than 2,500 people, including high priests and diplomats, attended the day-long event. Balinese weddings are unique, blending animistic, Buddhist, and Hindu beliefs, making them distinct to Bali. Today, Prince Raka is the head of culture and religion in Obud, actively fulfilling his royal duties. On the other hand, Princess Azri and her son Max manage a restaurant called Biku, known for serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with a particular reputation for its high teas. Some find joy in visiting a cafe owned by a princess. Now, 45 years have passed since the wedding, and Princess Azri, at almost 71 years old, still looks stunning. All her children are married and have their own families. She maintains a close relationship with her grandchildren, always caring for them, no matter where they are. Princess Azri and Prince Rakata are still happy together. The couple's love for each other remains as strong as ever, having endured the test of time. They still go on dates, enjoying popcorn and watching movies together. Occasionally, they grant interviews to journalists and share their heartwarming love story. Although Azri had a challenging start to her marriage with Raka, she never gave up on their love. From the moment she saw him, she knew he was the one. And after all these years, he still is. What do you think of this love story? And that's it. If you enjoyed the video and want more like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up below in appreciation. And if you haven't already, you really want to subscribe, subscribe to my channel and take the bell icon so you get notified as I upload a new video every week. See you in the next video.